Hey and fellas, I'm Otis, and this is another episode of Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. And in today's episode, we're gonna meet up with Paladin Ma Mike. Mike, Paladin Mike. <clears throat> My throat kinda fucking hurts already. And I haven't even started recording yet. And I'm already fucked up. Yeah, Paladin Mike is voiced by the same person who voiced Lorelei, which I think she's some kind of a um, musician. That's. Something I remember looking up about her when Borderlands 3 was coming out. Last episode, we, uh... We had a big fight over there, outside of this place. I got a shotgun. And some really unfantasy looking guns. Just a fucking... Straight up just a fucking doll pistol. It's not even have anything special about it. Anyway, let's look up what's up with Mike. So I want to remind you that I've been streaming this game on Twitch, and I actually pulled through, and I actually did stream it. For a paladin, what is it? Yeah, that's the Dragon Lord's doing. Just came from Robiner's tomb, actually. The Dragon Lord. Bollocks. We'll have to deal with him later. He said something like, "Oh, quite a mouthful you got," but he didn't even fuck. He didn't even fucking sworn like once, like they didn't say anything that bad. Just like all oh, bollocks. Oh my god, bollocks. I think I need to clean my ears now. Ooh, dynamite. That's not C4, that's just dynamite. Eh, <laughs> Fanta C4. Sounds like Fanta branded C4. Is that where fans I get their name from? Because they're fantastic. Oh, for Christ's sake, I just started this fucking video. <clears throat> so, I, as I was saying, I said uh, like the first episode that I probably streamed this game the same day that that episode came out. So you can follow me on Twitch if you want and check out my live stream of the game. And I pulled through. I actually did stream it. And I'm actually, over the weekend, I've been streaming a lot of it. And I got to level 17. I played as a different character. I made Frank, a character who I talked about. How she's one of my OCs that I sometimes play in, in video games. She's the one that I play the least. I rarely, I rarely ever play a video game where it's like an anime aesthetic and you make your own character. But... Something interesting that I can tell you about is that actually I'm playing on hard difficulty as her. So I got a direct comparison as to what's the difference between normal difficulty, which is what we're playing here, and hard difficulty, which is what I'm playing on my Twitch. And at the fir at the beginning I was like, well, hard difficulty. It's just like, okay, my guns are slightly weaker than they should be, and enemies deal more damage. So that's kind of what you expect from hard difficulty, enemies dealing more damage, you having some kind of a disadvantage. And yeah, you do have a disadvantage of weaker weapons. For example, I think this gun alone is already fucking better than whatever the fuck I found on my other characters. Like, I'm actually surprised- wait, I got a level, like, damage 24 pistol? Honestly, I thought how it works is that it, like... Like, let's say you have 24 damage, but you actually only deal 16. Like, the game takes away a little bit of damage from you to make it harder. But no, it seems like the guns are actually completely reworked so that they deal less, uh, less fucking damage. Because I have a pistol on that other character. Well, at this point, that pistol's probably way better than this one because I'm level 17. But yeah, actually it gotten a little bit hard, but I think that's like a moment in the overworld where you get to choose which path to take. I mean, you don't really get to like, oh, like you take this path and the other one gets locked out. No, it's like, you you know, you have the main quest you can follow, or you can go on a side adventure and help a bunch of goblins start a rebellion, because they're being overworked by evil goblins. So you help a goblin named Jar, it's a funny name. I start a rebellion in that quest line. I decided that okay, I'm gonna go with the side quest line first. I feel like if on this playthrough, on this let's play, I think I should actually go with the main plot a little bit longer before I go on some kind of a side adventure with Jar 
And here's two press rebellion. Not to also, I'm playing as the spell shot class, which I mentioned in the first episode that I would probably play as. Yeah. Pretty good. Also, you know what's funny? I was keep saying how this voice I picked for GZB strangely really fits his character. What the fuck's this? The giant fucking throw. The enemy's gotten really hard in that side location. And you know what's something interesting I noticed? Borderlands 3 gotten rid of like flying enemies. There's no buzzer buzzards for you to attack, for you to fight, I mean. There's no like racks. I mean there are racks, but they're very spare. It's almost like racks are dying out or something like that. And well, Borderland, uh, Wonderland kind of brings flying enemies back. There's so many fucking wyverns I was fighting. And each and every one of them was fucking annoying. Well, what am I going with? I'm going with damage, right? I completely don't remember what this character is all about because I haven't played as them outside of my videos yet. Oh, look at dice. Nice. Give me good shit. this I'm not using swords I did just as you can see found some really cool armor but it's the clawbringer armor I'm looking for the berserker armor so armors are kind of like an, a, another thing but interestingly enough yeah, that's a thing I noticed fucking no matter where I fucking position my cursor it always covers up my character look I get armor on me you're like purple tunic and I got some cool fucking armor. That's because I equipped the Clawbringer Plate of Riot. Except I'm not a Clawbringer, so the bonus that it gives me, which is the Clawbringer power, it really doesn't come in handy all that much for me. I imagine I, I'm just gonna find the Berserker armor and then from that point on I'm not gonna use any other classes armor. You can, as you see, you can wear other classes armor, like I'm wearing Clawbringer right now, but like, it doesn't really give me any benefits outside of like some... It doesn't give you protection, that's what wards are for, they give you protection. The armor gives you like, a uh, boost to your class's power. So it's a little bit different. I think the armor would be the one responsible for like, giving you all the defense, right? But no, it's actually your shield, like you, as in your... Ward or whatever it's called in this game. So it's the same case here. If I can get out of my way. So yeah, like I said before, go follow me on Twitch. I'll probably stream it today because I was playing a whole fucking lot of Wonderlands and I... Since I, you know, been to a hospital and all that, I've been advised not to go out too much. So, technically, I'm probably gonna sit around around home. Even though when they told me that I gotta sit home for, like, the next following week, now all of a sudden I feel like I'm do like doing fucking extreme sports and shit. You know? It's fine when they tell you to fucking, like, when you're just sitting at home. But when somebody tells you that you gotta sit at home, fuck off. He cornered me into an explosive barrel. And this shotgun sucks. Son of a bitch, there's so much fucking going on. That's what I love Borderlands for. Fucking all these explosions, so much shit going on on the screen at the same time, it's almost hard to comprehend. Just really fucking funny. I always said that Borderlands feels like the kind of game that's not even real. I forgot I have this. A zombie gunner? They're not just skeletons, they're zombies. I don't like that. Oh, fuck you. 
toss the rock at me. Gotta get rid of this fuck. It's a spell shot has a thing going on where, you know, they have like... They're better at using spells. I think their spells recharge way faster than other classes. On top of that... Ouch. On top of that, they got a thing going on where... Uh, their special skill is that they can turn an enemy into a sheep. And then they will just fly around, do nothing. So you can... So then you can, you know, destroy them. And deal a lot of damage. And if you kill them when they're a sheep... Also, I had a thing going on where, like, whenever I turned an enemy into a sheep, it would also activate my spell. So when the sheep, like, flew around, it, like, caused asteroids to fall around. Which was pretty good. But it kind of pissed me off, like... That's a thing in this game I noticed. Like, the skills you have, they're not, like, game-changing type of skills. It's not like you're gonna use the skill and then be like, holy fuck, I changed the course of the fight. Like, let's say you're uh, really getting your ass kicked. There's a location over there, but there's a quest that takes place there, so I'm gonna not go there just, just now. Fucking internet, you piece of shit. The fuck's going on with my fucking internet recently? It doesn't fucking work. Usually when I record, I'm also doing something here on, on the side, but... Uh... It's not important. Anyway, and what the fuck I was saying? I'm not going there, I'm just like collecting stuff. So yeah, there's a location over there, there's a cave, I can show you on the map, I guess. It's like a whole, whole tiny area. But there's a quest that takes you there later, so I'll probably just keep it for then. There's a collectible you can find there. Oh no, that's a berserker. How do I look? I fucking get out of this fucking... Looks the same. Just has like a big shoulder pad on the side. No way, it gave me like different plating on my hips. Looks kind of the same though. Like it either way. Thank you. Another fucking unfantasy ass weapon. This is like Evil Dead. I mean, uh, not Evil Dead. Army of Darkness. Which is an Evil Dead movie, but it's called Army of Darkness, that's what I meant. You know, when Ash goes to medieval times, but he has a shotgun with him still. I always get confused as a kid, like, it's Army of Darkness, e Evil Dead? Because they used to play on TV Army of Darkness, like, a whole fucking lot. It was like a fucking classic movie to play on the TV. So it would randomly go, come on and I would watch it. But they rarely ever p played... Uh, Evil Dead 2. So to me as a kid, it was just like... I think I've seen Evil Dead uh, once, but I was scared of it because that one was fucking scary. While Army of Darkness is kind of more silly. This shotgun is not as cool as the other one I had. Oh, GVB, you're saying as if you have friends to actually steal your shit from you. You don't. A buddy -o. You ain't got no friends. In extension, I have no friends. What was this? Oh, a piece of garbage. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Everyone's dead. Lords put down our rebellion with their I'm looking for these dice. Like, want well, I get some good shit out of them. And they're also a collectible. They, they're not just like a source of loot. But also collectible, which you gotta get. You know I've been thinking. Is this my lot in life? Isn't there anything I can do to better my predicament? Then I had a great idea. Old Stink Blossom should be a thief. Wow, what the fuck? Stink Blossom, that's his name? Nice name. I wish you could, like in Borderlands 2, like when you begin a reload and you do a fucking melee attack. It kind of like skips the reload. That was all such a fucking useful thing to do. But like in this game, even in Borderlands 3, you have to, like, you can still do that. But hold on, let me show you. So in Borderlands 2, when you begin a reload animation, 
and you kind of know how the reload animation goes. If you if you'd use a melee attack like halfway through it, see when I reload it. I have to show you what I mean. If you attack like halfway through the reload, you should be able to um, cancel the reload and do like a quick, nice, do like a quick. A quicker version of it and you can also do a melee attack but when you're playing Borderlands 3 or this game you really have to make sure that like you do the attack when your fucking ammo capacity you know became what it should be during the reload because if you like if I have zero ammo which I don't really want to waste my ammo right now and then I reload but my like my ammo doesn't fucking reset on the ammo counter in the corner of the screen and I do a melee attack, then I canceled my melee, I mean my reload, and it doesn't fucking go back. You know what, I'm exploring a lot of locations that come in, uh, that actually are used in later uh, quests. Also, this game really fucking takes its time. Hold on, I just found like a shield that's like... Better? Where is it? Also, I'm using SMGs on my other character, and they're not bad, but like... They're not good either. Well, this one gives me fire resistance, and this one gives me... The fuck is this? It's a curse resistance. Well, fuck it, I want fire resistance. I can live with a curse, but I don't know, being burned alive sounds a lot worse. What was I talking about? This game's... Quirky things. So yeah, it like takes a while before you actually get to like explore and like do some side stuff. Like you'd think, like in Borderlands 2 or something, they give you a side quest like almost immediately after the little introduction level you have, which is like the the one where you kill Knuckle Dragger at the end. But in this game's case, fucking it, t it takes a while, man. For this game to open up. Also, one thing I kind of dislike. You know how in Borderlands 3 you have Sanctuary Free? I just realized they're both called Free. Huh. Yeah, and Sanctuary Free is a really cool hub. Because everything you need is really close by. You have your little house. Where you can put items. You have like the thing for customization. You have the thing that retrieves your items if you lost them. A lot of cool stuff. Like really close by. But then this game... Like, it drops you into this place called, uh, what the fuck, Bright Hoof. And then it just kind of reminds me of Skyrim, how, like, in towns in Skyrim you want to go somewhere and do, like, a little thing. You gotta go, like, across town just to fucking take care of it. That's what this game reminded me of. Like, Bright Hoof, I haven't even explored it all that much, but, like, everything's just so fucking far away from each other. Instead of being, like, right next to each other, like, on Sanctuary Free. Which I really liked a lot. That's way too big of a jump. What if we undestroyed that last catapult and threw ourselves over? Undestroy? Hey, hey, hey. No touching the miniatures. But launching yourself with a catapult sounds cool, so I'm gonna let it go this once. This once. How did I miss that? Yeehaw! Am I saying that right? Those catapults take hundreds of goblin hours to construct. I'm out here creating jobs, you know. Yeah, I know. You're the good guy. You're the good guy. That's the thing about Handsome Jack that made him cool. Like, have I talked about that? <laughs> Fucking, I can't believe how well this voice fits the personality of this character that I came up with. She's such a douche. You fight a lot of skeletons at the beginning of this game, so it is worth having a ice weapon. Or a nice spell like I have. A nice ice spell. Check it out. Ah, fuck you. You made a skeleton pun, and I missed the barrel attack. This pistol's way better. Yeah, what well, thing about Handsome Jack I was thinking about what made him really good is that he is a bad guy. But like a lot of people f say like, oh, Handsome Jack was actually the good guy because 
you know, he wanted to civilize Pandora, but he wanted to civilize it and then rule it with like an iron fist. So, sure, Pandora would be more civilized, but it would still be fucked up and run, run by Hyperion, who, which is run by like some fucking maniac, which is Handsome Jack. So, it's definitely like out of the two alternatives you have, a fucking wasteland ruled by bandits and psychopaths. Rowned by bandits and psychopaths, I meant to say. Or a civilized place, kind of like Opportunity in Borderlands 2, run by a singular fucking psychopath. Who runs it with an iron fist. So which one sounds better? Like if Pandora was actually ruled by Hyperion and actually became a civilized place. Like what Opportunity was meant to showcase, that Pandora could all look like that. It would probably be like 24-7 surveillance, robots punishing people for... Fucking, I don't know, littering and shit like that. Berserker. Well, this one gives me world regeneration rate. Unless the other one gives me something too. Companion damage. I don't have a companion. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a lone wolf. Lone operative. I work alone. Also, you know what? I, you know, I don't give a shit about this fucking whole going into menus and throwing out items just to pick up items that are fucking slightly more expensive. Another thing that happens in this game very often, I noticed, is that you run into like these doors and you see that obviously there's something on the other end. You can see on the minimap how there's a whole fucking path over there. But then the game doesn't fucking let you go there and you're like, well what the fuck man? Well there's a lot of side quests I guess that just take you to these places. Oh, is that gay? get killed by an axe, nice. I love the skeletons enemies, they just have the dumbest things to say. How long is this episode? 22 minutes. Gotta account for the two minutes that I fucking got a phone call. Whatever. Well, this looks exactly the same, but shittier, and there's a sniper rifle. Also, yeah, I'm level 7 fucking teen on my other character, and I still didn't unlock the third weapon slot. Well, it might be because I went on a side adventure instead of following the main path. Maybe the main path gives you, like, gives you the additional weapon slot like, immediately. And then I, like a dumbass, ignored it. And I went on a fucking gnome or whatever the fuck they're called liberation quest. Also, as I found out, uh, what did I meant to say? Apparently, uh, Aaron Hansen voices a character in this, and you know what fucking character he voices? Because he voiced the the creepy guy from Guns, Love, and Tentacles DLC. But in that DLC, it's like you can really fucking tell it's him. You know, like even when I played it, and I. I was like, is that fucking Ego Raptor? Is that fucking him? Is he voicing this fucking guy? And it was! Uh oh. Ha, <laughs> you missed, bitch ass motherfucker. Nice. Suicidal skeletons? Ah, shit. My favorite. Man, my magic really does take a while to recharge. Oh yeah, and the other thing Spellshot can do, because as you know, you can pick two different action skills for each class. The other ability I think is slightly better than the whole sheep turning thing. What the hell? Oh, that's a lucky dice I didn't pick up in the other playthrough. It's kind of situated in a shitty, awkward spot. There we go. Hold on, I don't want to fucking fall. Eh, sucks. Eh, sucks, fuck it. Alright. 
What was I saying? Yeah, so he voices a character. No, I was talking about the spell shot. I was talking about that before, though. Let me finish that. And he voices a character in this game, too, and I was actually thinking, are they gonna play it? Game Grumps? I don't know, guys, but, like, uh... A lot of people fucking hate Game Grumps. A lot of people hate Aaron, not Game Grumps. I don't really hate him, because I don't fucking follow him in a drama and I don't give a shit. All I know is that he gets some shitty video game takes and he kind of sucks sometimes at playing those... ...the games... ...that they play on Game Grumps. Fucking, who cares? What's this? Wait, the recharge delay is better than when it's lower, right? So if I like look at a shield and I see that my recharge delay is worse, it's actually better, right? Like, I don't fucking know, really. This one gives you a fuck ton of like additional things. Restores health via damage. Plus seven projectiles per cast. That sounds kind of good. I don't know. I don't care. Fuck it. Doesn't have better damage though. I was so, uh, talking about how my, I was surprised how well this voice fits, what I imagined GZB to sound like. And funny enough, when I picked the voice for Frank, it also fits her surprisingly well. Where she kind of talks like she doesn't really care that much. She's like, yeah, whatever, fuck it. That's what I imagined her personality to be, she just kind of doesn't care, she can be bothered. Oh, nice. Bloody infrastructure, Edith, finally came through. When you live in a world where infrastructure is just kind of made up on the fly, it's pretty, pretty cool. Pretty cool. There's a wave defense going on over here. What's up, yes, Paladin so Mike? My least liked character so far. <gasps> what the fuck is this? No. Yes, I am. And I'm willing to sell you my autograph. All right. Well, I'm bloody impressed. What are I talking about? I'm talking about Game Grumps. And then I get distracted. I was talking about the spell shot. So their second ability is that they can just have two different spells equipped. And that's pretty cool. Oh, you saw that? The Queen's magic has unlocked more of your power <laughs> as a fate maker. <laughs> the Dragon Lord's army. The vending machines turn off when I'm far away from them. Class feet unlocked. You unlock your class feet. This is a powerful, always on passive ability that comes with the class. No points need to be spent to purchase it. Each class tree, skill tree can pot potentially be built around a feat, which each class only has one feat. For more info, I believe I have two feet. Get it? Open up the skill menu and read the cool stuff it does. Let's read the cool stuff it does. This is my feat. Rage of the Ancients. On action skill start, the Fate Maker becomes enraged. While enraged, he deals bonus frost damage for a duration. Enraged duration will not deplete with an action skill is active. And ends if the Fate Maker enters Save Your Soul. Wait. Oh, so if I activate an action skill, and I don't fucking die, then I have Enragedment, which makes me deal bonus frost damage. Activate an action skill when already enraged restores a portion of the enraged timer. Oh, it works on a timer. I see, okay. But it deals bonus frost damage, so I kind of have to keep that in mind that I gotta equip shit with frost damage on it. For example, I have an axe here that deals fucking poison damage. So well, too bad I don't have anything up my Yeah, they replaced corrosion with poison. It's kind of the same. But I noticed that there's not as many like different enemy types that used all kinds of different Oh, let's try this fucking thing. I would like this fucking spinny attack to be have like increased duration. Oh look at the size of the screen, I am enraged. Badass, and I do bonus. I would be cool if, I don't know, I dealt more damage in general, not just frost damage. 
Yeah, I told you that there's a fucking wave defense going on over here. Yeah, so it runs out of, on timer or if I get knocked down. I also wish they like maybe increase the movement speed when I'm doing the spinny attacks. Also, that's another thing I wish this game did. Like when I use a spell, I technically use it with my left hand while I hold my gun with my right hand. So I can shoot guns and summon spells at the same time. But what I wish the game did is would allow me to reload. Even though I technically do need two hands to reload while I use a spell. Because oftentimes when I run out of ammo, I immediately go for a spell. Just so I keep dealing damage. But then that fucking causes me to like... To just not... That causes me to like not... Uh, what the fuck I was saying? Not to reload, which is a, not a good thing. I need to have my guns reloaded to shoot them. Bloody hell. So yeah, this episode comes out today, I believe. So once again, I'd like to recommend you maybe follow me on Twitch. Also, yeah, so if you go to my Twitch account now, you should be able to still catch up with my entire playthrough. Man, I'm stunned how much this fucking voice fits. GZB. The tone of his voice is slightly not what I imagined, but the fucking attitude he has is exactly what I fucking thought. I'm so glad. Because, admittedly, his fate, like, his the way he looks doesn't really look what I imagined GZB to look. He looks too, uh... Thick. And by that, I mean... I should have said it. He looks too swollen. I always imagine GZB to be skinny, even though he's like a... You do fucking axe-wielding warrior and shit. So I don't think I ever played as any game where I played as GZB and I wielded guns. Never mind, I had guns in Terraria. So I guess that's not the first time. GZB's wielding guns. So this episode's 30 minutes. But what I want to do... Well, you know, I guess technically what the fuck we gotta do. We gotta reach Bright Hoof. Lord Sky, who the fuck's Lord Sky? What's wrong with my fucking internet? Fucking work, piece of shit. They call him him even though he's voiced by Lorelai. Arnold's Paladin Mike, not Paladin Lorelai. There's more of pa I guess Brick shows up at some point. Alright, so see you fucking later, Paladin Mike. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna restock on all this shit and I'm probably gonna run around collect all the garbage that I left behind and sell it. So, yeah, see you fellas and then... Fucking wish I could somehow disable this shit so you could see my character. So I can always... I don't know, I have a thing where I like to fucking face the camera at the end of the episode. Feels a little more fucking polite way to finish the episode instead of just fucking looking at the ground or some shit. So anyway, see you fellas in the next episode. Bye.